final round of the U.S. Women's Open at Pinehurst. Michelle Wee is on the cusp of her first major championship. They have not yet found Michelle Wee's golf ball. Very near the tree. Michelle Wee was anointed to be the greatest ever. This was a prodigy. The Tiger Woods of the LPGA Tour. Four times in the top three in majors at 16. She's a phenom. But at this time in her career, still hadn't won one. That almost make you want to cry. Here was Michelle Wee, finally in position to win the greatest championship that's always eluded her. But now it's about to unravel on one hole. See it? I don't know if she can get the club on it. I wouldn't think there's any real good thing to do with this. She's hearing some footsteps, <laughs> maybe the loudest from the number one player in the world, Stacy Lewis. Stacy Lewis is, in fact, on the range right now. You're watching it saying, maybe she's just not meant to win this. So Michelle Wee does not want a major yet. From a young age, my dream was to be a professional athlete. I just was really competitive, and I just really wanted to be good at something, and so my mom was very busy. She took me to ballet practice, took me to tennis practice, baseball. I still remember to this day, this kid hit it, and it came all the way to the outfield, and I tried to catch it, and the ball came in between my hands and hit me in the face, and I came off the field crying, so then there goes baseball. Soccer, don't know where my feet are, so that was it. And then all of a sudden, I just kind of started putting all my energy into golf. When I was 10 years old, I qualified for the USGA Public Links, which is my first national tournament. And kind of since then, I kind of just kept pushing the limits, see what I can do, and I had crazy dreams. We all knew about Michelle Wee before she ever turned professional. And she won our Women's Amateur Public Links at a very young age. How do you feel? I'm happy out of my mind. I can't speak about it. I knew I would win. From Honolulu, Hawaii, Ms. Michelle Wee. I've worked with many young players at a young age, and I've never seen anybody at that age who actually struck the ball like she did. She literally, at the age of 13, was hitting at 300 yards. Michelle really stands out for having an impact on the game of golf that is rare. There are very few people that come to mind, certainly. You think of Tiger. She was elevated to that superstar status at such an early age. In the 2005 U.S. Women's Open at Cherry Hills, Michelle shared the 54-hole lead at 15 years old. It's pretty exciting to think a 15-year-old might win the biggest women's championship in golf. Didn't close the deal today, but she's just been impressive to watch outside of this day. The following year at the U.S. Women's Open in Newport, she was tied for the lead again after 54 holes. Question was this time, could she finish? All right, he's birdie putt. Oh. Almost. She got close, but had a 73 in the final round and finished tied for third. Another good showing, but another near miss. Four times she's been in the top three in major championships at 16. You ever get frustrated, though? You're not winning? I mean, that's what this game is all about. I mean, I know she's only 16, but you wonder when you pile up all these near misses. The U.S. Open's your national championship. And growing up, my dream was being a U.S. Open winner. When I watched Sari Pak win it, when I watched Tiger Woods win it, seeing them hoist that trophy up, I was just like, this is incredible. It's the hardest test of your complete game. You think of a US Open, you think of long rough and tight fairways and firm greens. If you win the US Women's Open, that means you beat the best players on the best courses to win the most coveted title in women's golf. I think Pinehurst is one of those golf courses that has a special place in every golfer's heart. There's so many cool memories from that golf course, especially Payne Stewart and how he won. Payne 
Shane Stewart is the 1999 U.S. Open champion. Oh, my. It's a great, venerable venue. And what we did in 2014 was bring the world's best men and the world's best women to Pinehurst for two weeks, back-to-back -back opens. It was the one time that the men and women would be playing the same venue. I was just so enamored by it. I was, I was, I was obsessed. I was, this is the coolest thing ever. I came a day early. I watched Ricky Fowler play and Martin Carmer play, which was like flawless. Turn off the lights, the party's over. Having them play the golf course literally the week before was the most helpful thing ever. I asked a lot of the guys for their yardage books and Ricky did an amazing job at filling out the course while he was playing. So it was almost like I had a cheat guide going in, so it was pretty awesome. Well, it would be nice to finish in style. Martin Kummer is a U.S. Open champion at Pinehurst. When I watched him win, I remember looking and be like, this is truly just incredible. And I was like, oh, okay, you can shoot under par on this golf course. And I think because that was the only thing I saw, I didn't really view it as difficult, as difficult as it actually was. The 69th U.S. Women's Open is underway at Pinehurst number two. Michelle Wee looking for her first major. Last year she shot 80 in the first round, cited an illness and withdrew from the championship. Let's pick up action at number five. Just 177 to the whole, whole location over on the right. That will be a good distance, but it will be repelled by that Donald Ross green. Not exactly what she had in mind. U.S. Opens are a grind. They're hard golf courses. You're just uncomfortable. <laughs> You're nervous. This is Michelle Wee's third shot, and that was an absolute skull. And Michelle Wee now for a much needed par from about four feet. Got it just wide of the hole. What an ugly six that is for Michelle. Took five strokes from 177 yards. That's never good. You can't win the golf tournament on the first day, but you can certainly lose the golf tournament the first day. I was kind of putting pressure on myself, but then I stepped back and I was like, don't put pressure on yourself. Just like go out there and just like try hard. And then at the end of the week, no matter what happens, just know that you tried hard. Michelle Wee, a little bit of trouble here at seven. Well, she kind of laughs at it a little bit. In the past, I just get angry at myself, and then just it was like a snowball effect, and I just didn't want that to happen in 2014. Michelle Wee from about 20 feet, four par. Michelle will get one back there at seven. I just hope you're not going to really have many flawless rounds. I would make mistakes, but I didn't let it get to me. I didn't get angry. It was all about recovering. It was being in the right spot at the right time. And Michelle Wee now surveying a long birdie putt at 10. She made a conscious effort that week for sure to really stay loose. I think she really felt good about the whole aura and atmosphere of Pinehurst. She's now got a putt of, gosh, this is almost 30 feet. Oh, good putt. She gets out of the 10th hole with a birdie four. The way you do it is to hold a 30-footer like that. She's in pursuit of Stacy Lewis. She was terrific today. You have a golf course that just demands precision. And we saw a perfect, perfect round of golf by Stacy Lewis. A bogey free, three under par, 67, and the lead for the number one player in the world, Stacy Lewis. I was excited. Felt like all eyes were kind of on me. And yeah, it's added pressure, but I think that's what you want. I mean, that's a position you want to be in. I think for the casual fan, there's two things you notice about Michelle Wee at Pinehurst. One is a kinesio tape she wore on her left leg. She says that's been like an arts and crafts session every morning. It looked pretty cool, too, all those different psychedelic colors she had going in that week. She has a mild strain in her left leg, and no cause for alarm. That is purely precautionary. Not a lot of people knew, but I partially torn my meniscus. 
It wasn't bad enough where I had to stop, but it was my left leg, so I definitely felt it. The second thing about Michelle was the tabletop putting. Very unusual to look at. This is the putting style that seems to have staying power, the tabletop. You could set a drink on her back and <laughs> if you wanted to. Anybody that copies this, they better have that chiropractor handy because it looked painful. She came up with this on her own. You know, it wasn't like somebody suggested this. I had the yips. I think having the yips make you do kind of crazy things. We have so many players who are five feet. They're five two, and then we have the Michelle Wees of the world, and they want to putt like those players that are five feet tall. That's right. And then I started making everything, and I was like, huh. This can actually work. I didn't really care how I looked. I finally felt like I could make putts, and that was the most important thing for me. We're back live at Pinehurst number two, and a birdie putt for Michelle Wee. How about it? How about that? Michelle Wee to one under par. It's really this part of the game that has improved the most. And I think it's given her a lot of confidence in her entire game. At 18. Oh, can't miss right. And did oh, one of the <laughs> Only 25 putts through 17 holes today for Michelle. This one would get her within one of the lead. That's a great round of golf. Two under 68 and within one of Stacy Lewis. So we're starting to see the game we've been waiting for, perhaps since she was about 10 or 11 years old. The U.S. Women's Open is truly open. Whether you're young or old, professional or amateur, anyone who enters has a chance to win this title and get their name on the trophy. One of the highlights of the championship, Lucy Lee, at 11 years old, playing in the championship, American flag shirt, eating ice cream in her press conferences, missed the cut, but really was the darling of the championship. My dad likes to play. He's actually pretty good. Can your dad beat you? <laughs> no. <laughs> From 198 yards now at 14. Heck, can she hit some fairway woods? How about this one? Most people can't hit wedges that close. That's great. Getting to play in the US Open was a lot of fun. What's your plan for the rest of the day? Um, eat some more ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> now I have seen Lucy Lee and it is darn impressive, but I still say at age 13, I never saw a boy or a girl as talented as Michelle Wee. You met Lucy yesterday. What was that like? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, the first thought that came to my mind was I, I was like, oh, I wish I looked that cute when I was 11. <laughs> she was just so cute. Um, um, but yeah, it kind of just puts me back, you know. It's uh, definitely a walk back to memory lane. Who's more vocal in your family, mom or dad? Me. You? <laughs> Where do you get it from, your dad or your mom? I don't know. <laughs> like, they always team up against me. And I always beat them, so. <laughs> When I first met Michelle, she was relatively sheltered and understandably so, 11-year-old, who was an incredible talent, but also 11 years old. Michelle was under a level of pressure that I don't think many people would have understood. She was anointed to be the greatest ever as a teenager, so I think the pressure that she felt, it was unlike any other women golfer I've ever seen. This match was so intense, wasn't it? It was, you know, there's, you couldn't breathe. I mean, it was so intense, you know. There was no rule book how to really develop a prodigy. And I think everybody just got carried away, you know, just thinking to them, wow, you know, what can she achieve? I mean, hey, maybe she could win a men's tournament. Play the men's public links. I lost in the quarterfinals. But I have a lot of great memories in playing men's tournaments. I definitely did feel a lot of pressure. But at the same time, I was just so young, and I was just like, oh, this is so awesome. Like, I get to do this. This is cool. Let's do look at the bright side. You got here, and by making it to the quarterfinals, you're exempt to come back next year. I am? Yes. Oh, yay. OK, that makes me feel a lot You better. didn't know that? No. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah. that's it. You don't have to qualify. You're back in this championship okay, next year. OK, OK, I'll see them next year then. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle had climbed so close to the mountaintop and all before she could even drive, but she had injuries. Injuries that really prevented her from fully getting all the way to the top. 
I tried to play through pain for over two years and it was hard. There was a couple of years where I didn't make the cut or I would play really badly. And I was just get so frustrated with myself. But when I was going to Stanford, it was very easy to be completely away from golf. I was in such a protected bubble. I kind of had the best of both worlds. I still got to be normal and go to school and then also play golf as a professional. You know, I won twice while I was in college and I graduated. Michelle Reed. But now my life was fully in golf and I didn't know how to handle that. I had no real escape. Like all my friends were in San Francisco and I was just like, oh my God, I'm playing golf now. Like this is the one like first time I've truly realized like I'm a golf professional. <laughs> like this is my life. Adulting is hard. The transition to becoming an adult is not easy. And I guess I was living the adult life, being a professional since I was 16, but it didn't really feel like that. It was kind of scary. 2009 and 2010 got a couple wins in the LPGA Tour, but then she dropped outside the top 50 of the world rankings in 2012 and 2013, a real disappointment. Everybody's there watching, well, let's see how Michelle's doing. She was built up to such a level, and then, you know, as it is when you, when you get out there, people are very quick to knock you down and say, well, she's a flash in the pan. I was just like, really not happy. Like, I was just like miserable on the golf course. Then you have the pressure of the media on top of you, so it was a lot. I think there were a fair number of people who thought that she would burn out. All of a sudden, I was sick of being miserable, sick of complaining about my life. I'm so fed up with how miserable I was. The mindset that I had going into 2014 is that I was going to enjoy myself. I was just going to have fun. It is another hot and humid day in Pinehurst, North Carolina, where second round action in the U.S. Women's Open Championship is underway. While we were away, Stacy Lewis has drifted back to even par for the championship. And Michelle Wee began the day just one shot off the lead. She's now from the 18, her ninth hole of the day after she began play from the 10th. Anything just short of the hole would be perfect. We've been waiting for a long time to see Michelle Wee reach her potential. That might be happening. Michelle Wee for Birdie. I think we all love to see that desire that she has as a young girl really coming back to her. Just going out there and just try to play the best I can, you know, be in contention. It's just so much fun. So, you know, I'm just really grateful for the opportunity that I have. This is a long second at the tough par four eighth. Everything kind of clicked that day for me. It was like, it was pretty easy. Well, I was like, this is pretty fun, yeah. I was like, I like this golf course a lot. <laughs> Back at eight now, and a birdie putt for Michelle Wee. Pretty good on the hardest holes on the golf course. She talks about having fun. I can tell you the way she's playing is why she's having so much fun. At nine now. to back 68, and this could be her time. She has a three-shot lead at the U.S. Women's Open. It's another weekend at Pinehurst, number two for this third round of the U.S. Women's Open. Yeah, back in the day, they always spoke about Raymond Floyd having the eyes, you know, to be able to sort of almost just control the ball almost with his mind. And so Michelle really had that. It's hard to explain sometimes. When you know a player so well that sometimes something's just maybe a little bit different to what you normally see. In the third round, she really had that look about her. She really had that focus and that look and that determination and the confidence that she oozed. And she thought this was her time. At the par three ninth, the lead is three for Michelle Wee. She's reeled off five straight pars since a bogey and a birdie in the first three holes. Uh, Michelle's got a seven iron here in a hole located on the left rear portion of the green upper level. And the wind coming a little left to right. It's not a pretty good line. Yeah, it should release it run a little right. Yeah, that's great. Underneath the hole. it to five under up to 15 or Stacy Lewis has this for par ah, Stacy going the wrong way today 
there is we at the 10th. This is it hard. This is a beautiful looking tee shot here. This thing is going to run a long way, Roger. And Michelle Wee for birdie. I didn't want to be too comfortable. It's one of those like, tournaments where if you have the lead, you just got to get more of a lead and just be more ahead. That's kind of the mindset that I was in. Michelle Wee, the leader by four at the Women's Open, off the tee at 11. A lengthy par of four here. That is left immediately deep into the pines. Whoa, what just happened? I just hooked it really hard. Amidst the pine trees and just really doesn't have any chance to weave it through this forest. I haven't hit a shot that went that far offline all year. I was truly rattled after that one shot. Now over to the fourth shot for Michelle Wee at 11, just trying to salvage a bogey somehow. This one gets away. That shot on 11 was so bad that you're just like trying to hold on to like a good feeling again, trying to like get back to like neutral. Danger of dropping two here. Double bogey for Wee, and that is going to drop the leader to four under, and that moves everybody a little closer. And then, because the ball went so far left on the previous hole, I just overcompensated him 12. This is to the right, blocked. Native area, I believe. Maybe even pine trees. Golf is a crazy game. Having a lead means nothing in major championship play, especially. Here's Michelle Wee now for a long par save. Yeah, going along nicely, and then uh, suffer a double bogey. Now looking to maybe give away another stroke here. It really kills momentum. Roger, does it look like Michelle ever looks at the leaderboard? No. Oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a looker. Like, I'm a looker. <laughs> but I wasn't panicking, I wasn't freaking out. I just knew that it's US Open. Stuff like this happens. I was like, I'm just gonna move forward from here. But I think 14 was like the real test. Now definitely trying to flight this ball down, see if she can land it short and skip it back. That's not a very good shot. Could have easily got away from her. Gotta hit it. So Michelle Wee had it to six under just a few holes ago, but then plus four golf, double at 11, bogey at 12, another bogey at 14, and all of a sudden, lead is gone and she finds herself trailing. How do you stop the bleeding when things are going the yeah. wrong way out there in a championship of this stature? After I bogeyed 14, I was just thinking, if you look at the rest of the field, I was still doing pretty well. I mean, there were a lot of higher scores out there. You gotta make bogeys, okay? It's, you're not, you're not gonna play a US Open without making bogeys. I mean, it didn't really perturb her in any form or shape. Michelle Wee, first time, steps up on a tee box and does not have either the outright or a share of the lead. Shot. It's the shot she is trying to play. <laughs> so she pulled it off pretty well. Absolutely. I never not had fun. I still, like, enjoyed myself. I was just like, okay, now I'm still in contention. I'm still here. Like, I'm, I'm still here. I've not lost it. She constantly used the word fun. I want to have fun. And guess who has not left this group? Little Lucy Lee. The 11-year-old who shot a pair of 78s has been following we all day long. At 18 now, one final putt. So everybody in on this Saturday at Pinehurst. Michelle, what was it like out there for you today? It was a uh, front nine was a lot easier than the back nine. This could have been a pretty significant lead for Michelle, but I would imagine she's pretty happy being tied for the lead in the biggest championship they play. And again, no major on her resume so far. 
my pleasure to welcome Michelle Wee. Michelle, just talk about what you're going to be thinking about tonight going into tomorrow. Um, well, I'm going to try to sleep as much as I can. She was totally relaxed for the week. Michelle was asking me, what movies have you seen? Where's there a good barbecue to eat around here? And I think that's something that made her play a little bit better. I always try to say, look, you can only control what you can control. And so I said, look, you played great up to this point in time. I just keep doing what you're doing. I mean, it's an old cliche. We know that. But I mean, just go out and embrace it. Because I say, there's pressure out there, but just go and enjoy it. And this is where you want to be. This is why you work so hard. So go out there and do your thing. I knew that we were playing super late, and I have a tendency to fall asleep really early and wake up really early, so I didn't want to be awake from 6.30. So I started watching old videos of them winning. Nicholas chasing the championship and the record. Iconic videos of Jack winning, of Pat Bradley winning, of Tiger's fist pumps, and watching all the videos of their iconic shots actually really helped and soothed my nerves and I was almost excited for those moments. Like I was like, just give me an opportunity where I can have an iconic moment and have that iconic fist pump and I just like watched videos like all night. I was really just looking forward to the final round. There's gonna be a bomb party after this round if I win and like all my friends are here. I was like I gotta win. <laughs> Today at Pinehurst, in the final round of the U.S. Women's Open, Michelle Wee is tied for the lead to begin the day. She's on the cusp of her first major championship. Michelle was tied for the lead after 54 holes, just like when she was 15 years old. The U.S. Women's Open in 2005. The travesty of 2005. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Michelle Wee for birdie. Be her first of the day. Can you believe wow. that? Nope. She can't either, Johnny. That went right through the hole. That would almost make you want to cry. 2005 told me what not to do. Michelle Wee, long club out of this rough. It was obviously a huge gamble. And a touch of inexperience, I yep. do believe, starting I to show, would Gary. Think so. She was young, and winning majors, experience was required. They're not given to you. You know, a lot of things come into play. Michelle Wee for par at eight. Can't it is all part. coming apart. Michelle, you had a chance to win this championship. Why did you get off to such a tough start, do you think, today? You know, from the get-go, I just, there was a little, you know, I mean, not a little, it was a lot. Um, just going to get things going. 2006, you know, I, I played pretty well. Never had the speed. That was a very difficult putt but you want it so badly and you work so hard and you're just so close and you taste it. Michelle knows she has to make this one. Moves right early and then kind of straightens out at the end. So when you're in contention, it hurts the most. In 2014, I told myself, just be calm about things. It's going to be a very interesting Sunday as Michelle Wee could be breaking through at Pinehurst in the Women's Open. So much pressure on Michelle Wee, but she said she embraces that pressure. She doesn't fight it. A lot of times in the US Opens, from my past experience, people try way too hard in the final round, and they just kind of crumble. I just need to chill into the round. Don't do anything crazy. Just kind of play your game. Good there for a minute. Okay. Michelle walks away from the seventh green with her par four. She still has that two shot lead. I just knew that I just didn't have to do too much. I just needed to like just be patient. So I was just playing my own game. So I knew if I shot even par or one under that I had a really good chance to so just go out there and just be calm about things challenging bunker shot from Michelle Wee at the ninth. That was probably one of our best bunker shots uh, this week.
You know, golf's a funny game, as we know. I mean, anything can happen. And this is the last round. I thought, well, this is going to be exciting. The number one woman in the world. Never count her out in a situation like this. Stacey Lewis at the top of her game at that point in time. Right there on Michelle's heels. All of a sudden, Stacey Lewis is within a shot of the lead at the U.S. Women's Open. This is one of the most important rounds of Michelle Wee's life, and I think this is one of the most important holes in that round. When I got to the 10th hole, I knew I needed to do something. It's a hole that I played well all week. And definitely saying, Stacey, get closer and closer to me, light a fire under my butt. Just 170 left. Very important shot for Michelle. Pretty crisp. Pretty good looking shot. Yep. An eagle try now for Michelle Wee. I love that she's playing aggressive. That's why she has this eagle putt. Michelle Wee opens a four shot lead with an eagle three at 10. The fact that I made that putt, you know, at that crucial moment, it just like, it gave me so much confidence. Should walk out of here a winner unless just somebody goes nuts like Stacy Lewis. Over to 17. Well, she has got to go birdie birdie to have any chance. Stacy Lewis for a birdie. can get it to even with a birdie at 18. Even is in the hunt. I was just trying to get it to the house, you know, just keep getting it to the house, post a number. If I could get back to even par, I felt like I had a pretty good chance to win. Stacy Lewis, closest to we. I knew if I could birdie 18, that would be a big deal. I hit it on the green, so that's all you can ask for on 18. <laughs> Stacy Lewis very carefully taking a look at this birdie putt to get her to even and maybe with a chance. 18, it's just one of those putts that you dream of making it as the little kid. Last green of the US Open. With the green stands and the clubhouse behind the green, it's just such a cool scene. Michelle we currently at three under with Stacy Lewis in the clubhouse at even. I remember everything going really well. Being like, okay, I'm gonna be really conservative on this hole. Because to me, that was the hardest hole in the golf course. Headed toward that bunker. Then I hit into the left bunker, and then I was like, oh yeah, I can go for this green. I hit hybrid off the bunker, which I never really do. This is going right, and this is going to head for that bunker. That's a long bunker shot from in there. Oh, oh. <laughs> got it that was a very aggressive play when it didn't that's need to be. That. I mean, that I was agree. a hybrid club that, uh, you know, you could have hit a four or five iron out of there. I would never do that again, but I thought I could hit it on the green and make par. <laughs> it wasn't smart at all. <laughs> near the tree. Very near the tree. We get down there and we cannot find the golf ball. We are looking everywhere. I didn't think it went towards this tree, though. The length of time that they have to search for this ball, and they're going to have five minutes from the time they started search. They have a few minutes remaining. If Michelle did not find that golf ball, she would have actually had to take stroke and distance, go back and play her next shot with a penalty stroke from that bunker that she, where she had driven the ball. Now a couple minutes go by and you start to think, we aren't going to find this golf ball. So it was about that time I look around to people and I say, we need some help here. And we got some others helping. It's hard to think you can lose a ball in a US Open with all the people around. Go behind you. 
And I just said, no, this can't happen. Just when she's right there on the precipice of winning the tournament and, you know, th this, this had to happen. As soon as they started looking for her golf ball, it was when I was like, all right, we gotta go warm up again. Stacy Lewis is, in fact, on the range right now. If there is a playoff, it's a three-hole aggregate, and if they're still tied, they go to sudden death. In the face of the bunker! Strangely enough, I never once panicked. I was like, we'll find the ball. Look there, it's fine. It's there somewhere. See it? Oh, I see it. We got it. Looks like they might have yes, it. Yes, it is. Finally found it with like five seconds to left or something like that. It was something crazy, super close to five minutes. Um, I don't know if she can get the club on it. The ball was unplayable. She took relief from that. And now there is cause for stress. Yes, there is. Well, now you really do wonder what's going on inside, don't you? What the reaction to these turn of events is taking on her head. When she got into trouble on 16, we're all kind of on pins and needles because we know what can happen on a golf course like Pinehurst. It was like heart-stopping kind of stuff because you knew what it meant to her and to see it unravel on one hole, it was an uncomfortable feeling that you have watching golf tournaments, but it was really uncomfortable considering what was at stake. Got a lot of speed, slow down. She had to make about a five or six footer just to make double bogey. That was the most nervous I was. It was also a really, really tricky putt. She came to the 16th tee with a three stroke lead. If this does not go in, that lead will be gone. Women's Open at Pinehurst. Michelle Wee coming off a double bogey. She hadn't dropped a shot since the opening hole. Okay, so you take a deep breath. Organize your thoughts again. You're watching it saying, this is her destiny not to win this championship. Maybe she's just not meant to win this. You know, when you lose a ball in the 16th hole in the US Open, it's like that sort of certainly can do, you know, a lot of, a lot of damage to one's confidence. They're at the shadow. Ball. Yeah. I just told myself I'm not going to figure out about it. There's nothing I can do. It's done. When I hit it, I knew I hit it really good and is exactly where I wanted to go. Here you see a good luck going through the yardage books. Not just one. She got a book from Ricky Fowler. So she's had the kinds of notes that she's been using this week. He would like, map out all the putts that he had, and to the 17th hole, Ricky had the exact same pin position. They're gonna move left all the way. He wrote in like, it double breaks, and I don't think if he had written that down, I would have read it correctly, but I just kind of trusted the read. Just couple of holes away from perhaps winning her first major championship, but it has not been easy down the stretch. I knew if I just put it on the right line, it was going to funnel in. When that ball curved back, that was the best moment of my life. Yes, going in. <laughs> We heard the roar of the putt she made, and I kind of knew at that point that I was pretty much done. That fist pump was just years of trying and years of failing, and finally did it, finally made it. Michelle Wee back up by two with one left. It was a really cool moment for me. We go up to 18. Here she is, one final hole. 
a two-shot lead is huge. I'm definitely nervous walking to 18. It's a tee shot that I don't really like. And I had so much adrenaline, I just like went for it. And I hit it so far. I hit it further than where I hit my driver all week. And as soon as I saw that ball end up in the fairway, I was like, okay, I want this event. And just from then on, I really just enjoyed myself. I just like try to enjoy the moment. We work so hard and dream about these championships and then to be able to walk up 18, there's nothing better. I didn't want that walk to stop. I was just like, this is amazing. Michelle Wee with a chance to win. I can't imagine a better time, place to finally get it done. I remember just taking a big sigh in the booth thinking, oh, thank God. You felt so good for her. my parents, I saw my friends, you know, throwing up a shaka and there was just like a lifelong dream for me, like seeing like the people here. I had a 15 foot putt, I was so nervous. That was like when my hands were like uncontrollably shaking. And I left my putt like four feet short, I was like, oh. All she needed was a bogey to finally get it done. You want to kind of finish it off in style. And Michelle Wee has certainly had plenty of that through the years. What a way to break through for Michelle Wee at Pinehurst. Her first major championship is the U.S. Women's Open. It was just like a moment of such relief. I did it, I did it finally. Like I don't have to answer the when are you gonna win in a major question. It's pretty cool. To see those fellow competitors come out in the green and be as happy for Michelle as Michelle was for herself, it was a magical moment. To see her just finally break through, I was just really happy for her. And to have our biggest star win, it needed to happen. It needed to happen for her personally and it needed to happen for women's golf. Michelle's win was hugely impactful on the game, whether it's you know the, the six and seven year olds who are thinking about should I try golf, or the pros who are just starting out. To see Michelle Wee win, there's an inspiration. Hugging my mom, just both started breaking down crying, and it was just an amazing feeling. The 69th United States Women's Open champion, Michelle Wee going through everything that she did and to finally have it come to fruition here. This win was really the culmination of Michelle Wee's career. She's a national champion. This victory puts her in a different class of golfer. Michelle Wee has more talent in her little finger than a large, large majority of, of the women golfers out there. It's just destiny that she was gonna win that week. Michelle Wee is the real thing. She wasn't just a flash in the pan. And if you win a golf course of the quality of Pinehurst, I mean, it's, you know, that, that takes something special. It was relief. I did it. I did it finally. It's just like years of hard times. It all is worth it. That I'm a major winner. That I'm a US Open winner. That's something I'll always have, no matter what. It's pretty cool.